Hey everyone and welcome back to Build UX. In this episode of the CRM Inbox series, we're going to design a light variation of our sidebar component that we created in the last episode. After that, we're going to turn our attention to establishing an icon system for the entire design. With where we left off in the last episode, we created our sidebar component. And although I was planning on moving on to recreating the header and componentizing those elements, I think it'd be good to actually break out each of these layout areas into their separate light and dark themes. In this way, as we move through our atoms, molecules, organisms, we can basically establish the needed light and dark variations of each of those components along the way. So since the last episode, what I've done is added a color swatch for the layout grid color that we used in our layout grids. If I enable those with Control shift 4 you can see that we use those with the navigation link components. And we can use it for the rest of our layout grid documentation. To get started creating a light variation of our sidebar, let's go into our atoms and start focusing on creating light variations of the logo. So first off, I'm going to rename this frame to logos plural. And then we'll take this frame and double its size. So that way we can have the light and dark variations side by side. Next up, I'm going to drag in a rectangle that's half the width of this frame. And let's set its background color to be main background with the light variation. I'm going to drag this to the bottom of the layers and let's rename this plate light. And then from here, what we can do is grab these three components, duplicate them, and drag them over to the right. I'm going to make sure these are the final set of layers here. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename the logo type and the logo to reflect that these are for the dark theme. So with both of these selected, I'm going to hit Control or Command and R. And we can use batch renaming to speed things up. So first off, I'm going to match the word logo. And I'm going to replace it with the word logo slash dark. And this should match in our preview here what we had previously, but create a dark variation for both of these. I'm going to leave logo icon alone because you'll see in our reference design, if we go back to our pages, that the actual icon of the logo remains the same colors regardless of the theme. So back in Adams here, I'm going to focus on getting the logo type and then the full logo rethemed for our light variation. So instead of high contrast dark, let's open up our color styles and we can select high contrast for the light theme. And you can see that our naming convention is really coming in handy because we don't have to make a bunch of decisions to swap between themes. Everything is grouped accordingly. So with that taken care of, I'm going to recomponentize this and let's change the theme part of our component naming to be light. Next up with logo dark, I'm actually going to swap an instance of the logo type component. And here in the right side panel, we can change logo type from the dark to the light theme. And with that dropped in place, let's recomponentize this and rename it to be logo light. I'm going to hit shift one just to zoom to fit here. And it looks like all of our logos are taken care of for both themes now. Moving on, let's turn our attention to the molecules page. And we can address the navigation link as well as the navigation links plural component. So first off, let me just move this off to the side. So we have some more space to work on the navigation link component. And again, I'm going to double the width to accommodate the light and dark theme variations. One more time, let's drag out a rectangle. And it looks like this is already half of the frame width, which is perfect. Let's set the main background color, drag this to the bottom of the layers, rename it to plate light. And then from here, what we can do is actually grab these components and duplicate them over. And it looks like we might need to adjust our spacing just a little bit here. First, let me get these layers rearranged. And let's double check the actual frame size here. So it looks like we need an extra pixel on the bottom, which we added with Control or Command and the down arrow key. And then in terms of width, we'll probably need a total of eight pixels more width, it looks like. So I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and the right arrow key. And then we'll move this over by a few pixels so we can check our work real quick. 
So it looks like that has the correct spacing on the left side. Let's make sure our right side matches accordingly. With that, we have everything set up as needed. Okay, so turning our attention back to these navigation link components, we're going to do a similar thing where we rename the components to include the theme name as part of the variation. So selecting these with Control or Command R, let's go into batch rename. Let's say we want to match navigation link, including the forward slash, and we'll replace it with the same thing, except for we're going to append dark to that naming. So with that taken care of, all of these have updated accordingly. And I'm actually going to remove the hover and focus styles from this right side for now. I know it'll be difficult to see for the moment, but we want to create the hover and focus styles based on the default variation. So let's open this up and change high contrast dark to be high contrast light. And now we can see that in place. Our hover indicator or text decoration was medium contrast dark. So let's flip that over to the light theme. And with our focus indicator, we also need to change that over as well. All right, so with that in place, we can componentize this with Control or Command plus Alt or Option and K. And let's rename this so that light replaces dark in terms of the theme name. With that taken care of, let's drag out a couple instances of this for the hover and then one more after that for the focus state. So for the hover state, we can override the text link color and change this to be medium contrast for the white theme. And then we'll bring in our text decoration. That should be all we need for that. So we'll componentize this and change default to be hover. Next up with our focus state, let's open this up. You'll recall that we basically have kind of an inverted style going on when we focus these links. So if we turn on our focus indicator, we're going to have to modify the text color to be high contrast for the dark theme because we flip those colors around. Componentizing this, let's rename default to focus, and then we can move on to the active variation. So with the active variation, very similar process. We're just going to flip these colors over to the light theme variations. And our active indicator needs that treatment as well. Componentizing this, renaming it with the light theme indicated in the component name. And then from here, we can duplicate this out twice. All right, so link text for the hover state goes to medium. We bring in the text decoration, componentize this, changing default to hover. And then lastly, for the focus state, bring in the focus indicator, flip the text color to high contrast dark, and then componentize this last variation. All right, so with those in place, let's get everything aligned and centered up in our document so everything is nice and tidy. And then from here, now that we have all these variations for the light theme of the actual link, we can turn our attention to this group of links that will be used in the sidebar. So similar process here, we're going to double the size of this frame, drag in a rectangle that matches half the width of this frame. Let's double check we have the needed spacing around this component. Everything looks good there. So with this plate, we want to send this to the bottom. And here I'm going to use control and the left square bracket to send it down one layer. Let's rename this to plate light and get the main background light variation in place. Next up, I'm going to duplicate the navigation links component, getting that centered up on the right panel. And let's be sure to rename this to navigation links dark. So that way we have differentiation in the naming. All right, last up, now you can see how this is going to start to pay off componentizing all of these by theme. We can actually select all of our normal state links and go to our instance panel, changing them from the dark theme to the light theme and the normal default variation. And then lastly, we'll do the same thing for our active link going into this menu. Let's go over to the light theme, active and default.
And with that taken care of, everything else will remain the same. So with some simple instant swapping, we have this whole new variation of our navigation links component taken care of. So let's componentize this and rename it for the light variation there. All right, so with these components built out, we can now create a variation of our sidebar component. So the first thing I'm gonna do is wrap this in a frame and we'll rename this to be sidebars. And the main advantage of wrapping components in a frame is not just to visually group items, but also to have them nested within the components tab. So here you can see that it gives us this drop down UI for any components that are grouped underneath a frame. So with this, we'll have our sidebar. Let's drag that to the side, rename the original one to be sidebar dark. And then we can get all of our spacing within the documentation set up. All right, so turning our attention to the light variation here, we're gonna to go to our sidebar plate. Let's change this fill from main background dark to main background light. It looks like we also need to apply that swatch directly to our original side panel, so let's get that in place. It looks like we also need to apply that swatch to our original sidebar, so let's make sure that's in place. And then going into our sidebar content, instead of logo dark, what we're simply going to pop in logo light, and then navigation links dark will become navigation links light. And that's it. We've created a full variation of the sidebar that's fully rethemed. All we need to do is componentize this and rename it according to its theme. Now that this is ready to use, let's go to our pages tab. And zooming back out, we'll go over to our refinement section. What I'm going to do is actually grab an entire copy of this artboard. And then let's rename this to CRM inbox desktop light. So as we build out these components, we can build out both themes side by side. Next up with sidebar dark selected, let's go to the instance panel and swap it over to the light variation. I'm also going to grab this background plate and apply the main background color for this theme and everything else will get replaced as we build it out by feature area. I don't think we need the reference for these layers anymore, so I can get rid of that for these artboards. And let's rearrange these layers to make more sense. Lastly, I think the background plate on our dark variation, yep, still needs that main background swatch applied. So as we're working through this refinement stage, we're basically getting everything finalized and polished up. And so any little detail that we catch, we wanna make sure all of our color styles are applied, all of our type specs are applied, and to always be reflecting on any opportunities for more of a design system mentality in either our component documentation or having all of our states accounted for. So with these sidebar components finalized, I think this is a good place to stop for this episode. In the next episode, We'll finalize the design of each of the icons we can find throughout the UI and create a system for conveniently swapping between different instances. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the next episode, which will be out soon.